Doodle bud. Today we're talking about sheening inks, and I'm actually calling this episode Sheen on, you crazy diamond. Let me know in the comments if you got the reference. Look at that ink. Gorgeous. So, there's all sorts of cool inks out on the marketplace. They have different properties. These ones are sheening inks, and we're going to talk about that. We're going to go through what inks I'm going to test. We're even going to get under the microscope to see what causes the sheen. Yep. Okay. Uh-huh. Hmm. So obviously there's a lot more inks out there that have sheen than what I have, but I can only test what I got. So we're doing the Robert Oster lineup with the Lake of Fire, Fire and Ice, and River of Fire. Also going to be doing some Diamine ink, so Majestic Blue, and also their new Iridescent series, Christine, Maureen, and in the box we also have Little Bob, where I think if you got the full-size bottle they call it Richard. We have the KWZ Sheen Machine 1 and 2. And also, all the way from the Philippines, Vinta Inks, we're going to have Bugong Buha and Maharlika. Don't know if I said that right. And last and of course least, Monteverde California Teal. This stuff's got sheen, but man, this stuff is nasty. Just look at the box even. It just... This stuff just wants to do everything to stain. I mean, even look at the bottle. Look at that. Like, okay, look at this. Clean. I'll touch the bottle. Already got some stuff on me. So this stuff just wants to make the world a dirty place. Look at that. All I did was open the box and my fingers already coated. You can sit in the back. All right, the pens I'm using. We got a Pilot Parallel 2.4 millimeter. Whoop. Like I was saying now that the camera's stable. Lots of fun. I'm just going to fill it up with a little bit of ink. I'll probably squirt some ink in there or maybe just dip it. I'll see how it goes. And then also I'll be using, you gotta, you want to use a wet nib when you're doing in sheen inks, but this is my uh, Leonardo and it's got the favorite stub of all the stubs that's ever stubbied. They're 1.1. This thing is butter. So we got 12 inks. And I'm going to be doing three pads of paper, two different uh, Rodillas, and then also my personal favorite, the Muji. So this is going to be a bit. Uh, I've got my cleaning supplies. This is going to take a while to do this many. And also we got super saturated ink. That's part of the sheen. So the cleaning's going to be brutal, but uh, let, let me just get started. <laughs> this is going to take a while. So it is now 101. <laughs> this is taking a while. I should have cut it off at six, but we're halfway through. Six of the 12, this is still drying. This this takes a while. So through the magic of video editing, we are done. Got all the, all the ink samples done in the books here, everything. And the pens are clean and everything's back to where it was. So let's talk about what happened and how it's looking. Okay, so let's go through these, but first I actually, <laughs> I had these in my car and I had to like run there and put them under my sweater because it was raining a little bit. And if any one drop of water got on this piece of paper, this would be ruined. Which also begs the question, why on earth are we using fountain pens to begin with? But let's go through this. So we got KWZ She Machine 1 and 2. So this is on the Rodia dot pad as you can see starts off blue and green give it a little twist look at that beautiful pink color and you got the red sheen going on here too so what i did is uh the first pass is kind of light as it can be with that 2.4 and then i did a thicker darker one down here some squigglies and then a blob so you can just see the intensity you're also going to see this on the 1.1 millimeters as well now we got the vinta inks the two of them as well, you know, both. And you can see this is where it starts, starts getting crazy. So this one, that's the Dugong Buha. <laughs> I'm butchering that. I don't speak Tagalog. Uh, but you could see just super intense sheen, almost like you can see the ones that stand out here, here, and like this guy. Um, but fantastic sheen. Nice colors on their own too. So lighter blue, um, little 
darker you'll see some of the other writing samples as well almost has like an acid wash jeans kind of appeal to it we got the diamine diamine series the iridescent little bob i only got him in little because i'm not going to use this color as it is normally um not my sort of favorite but it's got that gold to it as well and it does take quite a bit more to get that sheen it's a lot less but it's so it's not a gold flake that's a gold sheen then we got christine so more of that aquamarine sort of greeny turk well not turquoise but a greeny blue color some lovely sheen as well as you can see it gets it much darker with that sheen on sheen off right and then the maureen uh, lots you can see here too it's just dying to show off look at that maximum pretty cool we've also got majestic blue from diamine and uh, I, I like this ink just on its own. Even on a fine nib, it, it looks great too. But it's got some nice sheen as well. So this is good for, like, say, daily use. we got the Robert Osters going on. Fire Nice is up first right here. Whoops, sorry about the bump. Um, nice sheen, not overdoing it. Good for, like, an everyday ink. River of Fire, it's got a little bit. It's a pretty dark green. And then the Lake of Fire, a little darker than the Fire and Ice. Nice, good everyday ink. So these are good sort of everyday inks. I find they're a little easier to wash as well. And then we got California Teal. I debated about just throwing this bottle in the garbage. It's the bane of my existence. But, you know, it's got some good sheen to it as well. But I think uh, it's <laughs> you can get sheen with a lot less mess. This stuff just gets crusty. But anyways, there we go. So that's the, uh, the lineup I did there, one style of writing. So this is all with the 2.4 and this stuff you can actually feel it. It has a texture to it because it gets so thick and raised. I also did entries into my ink cyclopedia with, with them as well. So I'll just show these real quick. So most of this is all the 1.1 and then we got the 2.4 down here. So this is this regular sheen machine. So it's a great color on its own, but super sheener. All right. We got sheen machine part two, beautiful dark green on its own. And then you start to get it nice. So this would be a good kind of daily one where it's not as intense, especially if you've got to read notes afterwards. Too much sheen, it can make it hard to read. The Vinta Marhalika, really nice looking ink as well. And just with a nice little sheen to it, not too much over the top, even on the 1.1. The other Vinta, lovely color, all on its own as well. You can already see it. And then look at that. So this is very similar to the KWZ sheen machine one little bob you know it is a nice color just not something i've used daily but it looks pretty and you get just a little bit of sheen to it it's actually not too intense you have to go super saturated before you start to see it so um, if you want a really super sheener with this type of color I'm, I'm betting there's better options out there diamine christine lovely ink as well good for everyday use kind of reminds me of the robert oster lake of fire but a very manageable sheen, not over the top for sure, but it's got a nice little bit to it when you really start to get super saturated. Then we've got the Maureen, a dark saturated blue. Uh, but again, it's really got some phenomenal sheen to it, especially when you lay it on thick, but also too, just on your regular writing. Really good as well. The Robert Osters again, a little bit of sheen, but good for like sort of every day, not over the top. And then California Teal, you can see here, it's got some good sheen to it as well. So the first two writing samples I showed were all on the Rhodia paper. Next up, I thought, let's do my Muji. This stuff handled fantastically as well. So um, this this one stays sticky forever, it seems. you got to give it like six months before it dries, but it touches anything. You close the book even after like an hour, two hours, it's still stuck to it. But anyways, you can see beautiful cover colors on their own give it a tilt and this stuff showed off the sheen wonderfully as well so this paper does great with it uh i, I know you're thinking tomo river i i don't own any the shops around me don't carry it at least the ones i've been to i just haven't gotten around to ordering it but i should get some but uh yeah you can see this fit this dugong buha this stuff just goes crazy that sheen on you crazy diamond i wrote that was with this ink and on Muji paper as well. Little Bob's got a little more gold sheen to it on this paper. 
Um, they're all doing exceptionally well. The Maureen, and, I, and as expected with the other paper, this stuff's a little more calm, good for everyday use. There's a California teal and uh, ran out of room. So Diamas the uh, Diamine Majestic Blue is on the back side. But even Bleed Through, you know, I went hardcore on this stuff and it's doing pretty good for the punishment I put onto that paper. And here's the Rhodia. You can see on the back there too. So I'm super impressed with this paper for a fraction of the cost. This stuff does great with the fountain pens. So when you see this stuff, you just wonder, how does it do it? Like that is such a wild color change. So again, I'm no chemist. I didn't, that was actually one of my worst subjects I did with, with my engineering studies. I, I not got nothing against it. It just wasn't something I was overly interested in. So there's a lot of holes I have in the chemistry lab understanding this stuff. But, you know, I can do what I can do, which is get out a little microscope and give it a look and see what we find. We're looking at KWZ Sheen Machine 2. You can see that dark green is absorbed into the paper and we're left with the excess ink to dry on top. This is what you get. It almost looks like a lava rock or something. It's very textured. You get all those little crystals floating on top there. Here we are on the Vinta Marhalika. You can see just a little on the edge of that nice blue. Where's a thick spot? Here we go. So the same thing. The blue is absorbed in and a big thick layer of those crystals floating on top. Now this is the other Vinta, the Dugong Buha, the Super Sheen. You can see just how jagged those little crystalline structures are on the sides there. So maybe that has something to do with the more Sheen, they get more of that going on. And now we're on the little Bob. So you can see the gold sheen action going on that bright kind of pink color same thing the pink underneath the gold forms on top that's actually super pretty how it absorbs there and mixes with the cellulose in the paper and just out of curiosity this is one of those giant chunks that are left in the california teal bottle uh, you know they're just everywhere as soon as you open it up i thought let's let's put it to use and give it a look under the microscope they look pretty cool. And there's even a little bit of a vein of a green in there you can see. So it's super interesting stuff. I'm kind of wondering now if maybe I should crunch it up and see what happens to it. It does look cool though. So here they are all crunched up. Same little blobs now. I'm curious what happens if I add some water to it. Okay, so here are some of those dried up flakes from the California teal. You can see it's got that sheeny red color. As soon as you rub it though, it turns green. Okay, so let me get my eyedropper. Here where are they? Here they are. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put a drop and this is gonna turn green instantly. So what it seems like with this sheen ink is that the sheen color is probably the actual color of the powder, of the dried ink. And when you add the water, that regular non-sheen color is the one that you get. That's just sort of what I'm guessing. I, I don't know if that's true for the little bob. I guess I gotta get a crusty sample of this to see if it turns from this to that. Well, I, I mean, I guess I could just put some water in this and try to get a drop. Let's see if that turns red. There we go. Yeah, so even on that, so you get the water in the middle, it still stays that regular kind of pink color, but you get it on the gold, it turns to that color. So we got up close and personal under the microscope and checking out these blobs of ink to figure out how the sheen works. And so, Let's summarize this. Again, this is at least just my take. You have, feel free to, to correct me in the comments, which I know you will. I'm not a chemist, but this I'm just looking at this and I'm gonna figure this out. So the light blue color in this case, you know, the regular ink color, this is the color you get when all the ink that you lay down can get absorbed into the paper. Now it's really important. You're not gonna get the sheen effect with the wrong paper. The paper has to be able to handle a large amount of ink and have it not feather and, and just bleed out like crazy. So th this ink gets absorbed into the paper. But now if you go beyond that sort of maximum 
paper saturation point, you have excess ink being left on the top to dry. And what happens, so it's not getting absorbed into the paper, it's just sitting on top, the, the uh, water evaporates out of it, and you're left with essentially the little crystalline structure, the, the crystals of the ink itself. And that's why we're getting that sheen. And you can see those, those little crystals are going to change the wavelength of the light. Like first, when it dries, it changes color, but also because they're in a crystalline uh, format, depending on the viewing angle, that will change the light. So it's almost like a, like a phase shift um, on the light. So you're going from one wavelength to another, and because of that ref reflection and refraction that's going on inside of those crystals, depending what angle you look, you get the right incident angle of light and reflection coming back out, you get your sheen effect. Now again, that's just me spitballing from what I see. Um, I may be completely off base and completely wrong. That's okay. I'm willing to put it out there. But uh, I want to sort of understand these sheen inks better because they're pretty cool. I think they look awesome. You can't do that with a ballpoint. You can smudge the hell out of it, but you, you can't do that with a ballpoint. At least I know of. So there we go. So after all this writing and cleaning and sampling and comparing, uh, I you know, at least I feel I know more about these sheen inks and how they work than when I started. I just, I thought they were pretty cool. I thought, how do they do that? I got to figure this out and look into it. So I thought I would do this video. And um, that's why I got the microscope, so I could do this. <laughs> I had to answer this even just for myself. But this, by the way, was the longest video I have done so far, as far as how long it's taken me to do all this. It was crazy. So uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Maybe you learned something more too, or have you know some something to share with us. So feel free to punch in some comments and give me one of these. That would be great. And maybe there's a subscribe button somewhere. If you could hit that, that really helps me out with the channel too. So anyways, I hope you liked it. We'll catch you next time.